So good morning, I'm out today on a concerted mission to catch the first fish off the coquit. I uh, I really want to get it, so I wasn't that bothered at the start of the season, but as um, the weeks go by and that first fish remains unclaimed, I really would like to be the first one to catch the first salmon. So that's the state of the river this morning. We've had that lovely rise there up to about 1 meter 40 on the gauge and now it's dropped right back down to 0.68 of a meter which is um, going to be a good height to fish. The one thing I've got going against me today is probably there's going to be a little bit too much color in the water but since since we haven't had any water for ages um, I'm just going to go and give it a whirl and fish, fish hard today. I'm going to fish every inch of the water and hopefully meet my first fish of the year. I will make just the one small concession to come fat and have a cup of coffee before I get at this. A quick note on wading boots. I'm wearing a new pair today. Now, luckily, I saw in a classified um, a pair of second hand. Ovis ultra light wading boots for a hundred quid, which is a total bargain. They've only been worn a couple of times and they've already got studs in, so they're excellent straight away. I can tell I've got grip. I came up here the other day and I slipped on my ass because my old boots are still wearing the rubber soles and with them being so worn, I just went arse over tit. Um, however, unfortunately, when I've got them, I got them, I tried them on and they're like they were perfect, but like perfect without my neoprene wading boot feet things on uh, and obviously my two pairs of merino wool ultra thick socks and it just means that they're a bit tight so they're not going to be any good for like winter fishing unfortunately but I'm going to keep them just use them either as like hiking boots or for like summer fishing when I haven't got so many layers on my feet it's devastating because it was a completely great deal this place is full of pheasants Okay, so first glimpse of the river. The height looks good, the floor looks nice, and it's not as coloured as I thought it was going to be. So on the drive over here, I passed the river at Geysens, and it was pretty chocolatey, I must admit. And there is certainly a lot, a lot of colour in here, but it's not pure cocoa, which means there's hope. Yeah, it's coloured, but I think, you know what it is? It fish will be able to see flying that. I haven't got my glasses and I can just about see to the bottom in, in the um, in the margins. Yeah. Alright, I think this is okay. I think this is a, a good day. There's no wind, it's beautiful. Loads of wild garlic out now. I look forward to the wild garlic time of the year. If you can get it really, really early and get the bulbs out as well, which you can only do at the very start of the season. And I really like the bulbs, not just the leaves. Ah, it's, hard to get out. it's hard to get the bulbs out, but if you can, if you can spend a bit of time and just gently ease them out, like I say, at the very beginning of the year, when it first shoots through, it seems to be the only time of the year you can do it. And then you get the fat, juicy stems of the bulbs. And I love these, just fried up with mushrooms. They're really sweet and they taste more of onion than they do with garlic. Can't do it on my own. That's a good pool there, look at that. Oh, very nice. Are you going over or under? Under. Yeah, dragging a really expensive sage run through here, for example. Wouldn't be very wise, I don't think. Down and up. Ah, 
Ah, oh, it's all good fun, mate. <laughs> oh, nothing like a scrabble around. Oh, nice. Oh, there's even like a, a grassy bank. It's like the test. All right, so I know where I am. So this is the bottom of another beat that I fished a lot last year. And I had one fish down at the very tail. So I'm basically gonna go and start there. I'm just approaching the beat from a completely different angle. Ooh, it's a beautiful day, it's perfectly still. Temperature's good, there was a bit of a frost this morning, but it's about eight or nine degrees now and it's climbing the temperature. Good. Ooh. Water's a great height. And I don't mind that there's colour in. People catch fish in coloured water at the river. It's muddy, but it is dropping. And I think it's gonna clear pretty quickly. I reckon over the course of the day, this will be pretty clear. The sun's coming out as well. I like these conditions. Come on, Springer. Wherefore art thou? So I've got a great big lump of a fly on. It's some black and yellow monstrosity. It's a um, copper tube. Right, we'll get rid of that. We don't want any of that vegetation on there. So there we are, that's what we're dealing with. It's got some jungle cock eyes. It's got a partridge size 10 double on the on the business end. And it's got some flash in, and I'm obviously going for spring colours, yellow and black. Right, that'll do. Come on, baby. Let's have a nice silver fish out in the brown water. There's a good pool, this one. And it's got like a, um, a sunken tree up there, which creates a kind of weir. I'm just trying to explore every single inch of it. It's not easy to fish from down here. Getting right down at them. And I think it is clearer downstream. Here comes the sun. Yeah, so there's a bit of a rock that I can see making a disturbance, and that's going to cover that now. Go on. Okay, nothing doing so far. I'm finally able to get into the water. There's a good long stretch of streamy water now that should fish nicely. And a lot easier than that bit at the top of the beach. Some good pools up there, but access is obviously going to be tricky with a fly. Yeah, so it's got a nice pace and depth from here, I think. 
My big budgerigar tube fire is falling to pieces, so I'm gonna have a change of tactics. I'm gonna go for a heavier sink tip and a smaller fly. I was getting sick of lobbing that thing around anyway, it was a very ungainly process. See how this one does for me. I've just shit myself there. So, just down there where my rod tip is, there was a splash in the water and I thought I'd disturbed the salmon, but it was an otter, it was a little otter. That's the second time an otter's given me a fright. I've decided to change locations. I'm going further upstream. First I've got to get back to the car. Definitely off the beaten path here. Uh, well, this is fun. I've made it a terrifically, I've made a terrifically bad job of navigation. Uh, uh, bloody hell! Where's the fucking path? I can't take a shortcut, and I've paid a heavy price.
Ha, ha, ha.